Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about serverless microservice pattern. I mean, in the recently, since last two to three years, this serverless is more popular, either in terms of AWS or Azure or the GCP world. We started writing these serverless functions where you don't need to take care of the infra. These are like functions you are writing either Python, either Node.js or either Java functions. They are taking care of your execution. So with the help of all these functions, you are just taking care of the, the code, the business logic which you are writing. Rest or like about managing the infrastructure, managing the dependency on other services are being taken care by these cloud vendors. If you are talking about AWS as a Lambda is there, Azure functions are there. You are just writing the business function and rest all is being taken care by them. So when, what all use case, where can we use these serverless functions or the serverless architecture? Okay. So in our, uh, in, in the application development, we always take care of two things, synchronous communication or asynchronous communication. Services can invoke another services and they have to wait for some particular timeout. Like uh, there is a HTTP timeout when you raise a particular request. It's a request and reply. So after raising a request, you always wait for the response. Similarly, there is asynchronous communication. There is a uh, asynchronous communication which is happening. You are actually making one request to another service. You will just get the acknowledgement, okay, uh, that request has been sent. That's it. But the actual processing of that request will happen later over the time. That is called asynchronous request. Okay. Now in terms of uh, this serverless, if we talk in terms of AWS world, then we have these lambdas. Lambdas are nothing but a functions can be written in any programming language. They are responsible for executing our business logic. Rest all like uh, before Lambda or before serverless, we used to write the code, deploy our application onto the EC2 instance and EC2 instance we have to manage, right? Either AWS was managing it or we were just doing some alterations in the EC2 instance, scaling up, down or whatever the strategy we are adopting that we were able to do, right? But if we don't want it to do it, we just want to focus on our business logic, what is being executed then we can just write these functions. These are called Azure functions, AWS Lambda functions, and Google functions in the GCP platform, okay? So what we are doing is we are writing functions. So it is serverless. We are not managing a particular infrastructure for uh, creating this kind of infra environment. We are not managing any EC2 instance. We are not taking care of anything. We can create everything without any server, like DynamoDB as a service, Lambda as a service, you are using on AWS console itself. You are just writing your code as a JavaScript function, Node.js function, and you might be interacting with the Dynamo, MySQL, or any other S3, SNS, SQS, all the other services through this. We are not talking about application deployment and all, because everything is internal. You, you create API gateway, deploy your Lambda on it, and then Lambda can do whatever you want. Okay, so here we actually do is, uh, after API gateway, we actually create a Lambda. Lambda can take care of the authentication authorization for API gateway. You can configure the IAM policies if you are using uh, AWS one because these things exist everywhere. Azure API gateway and then Azure functions. Similarly, AWS API gateway and AWS Lambda functions and DynamoDB. Right, this Lambda can talk to any service. Lambda can talk to your S3 service, your SQS, SNS, or it can be talking to your any other microservice, right? So here we are doing aggregation from the API gateway. So whatever we were writing through the microservices where you were, you were using API gateway provided by vendor, and then you were writing another microservices which is taking care of getting the data from other microservices. Now you replace it with this serverless. You have AWS vendor specific API gateway. You have a Lambda, which is just a function which API gateway can trigger on a particular endpoint. And then Lambda can talk to a microservice, can talk, talk to any external or internal service we have on AWS. Okay, so serverless is like now more popular here, if we can achieve all different kind of microservice pattern with the help of all these things, SQS with the DLQs, with the DynamoDB, MySQL, SNS, 
you involve everything right then you can achieve the event driven architecture with this you have an api gateway api gateway will uh, trigger the lambda and lambda will send a message to sqs sqs there will be another lambda as a consumer and then that lambda is talking to another microservice and sending that message forward right similarly you can actually do all these cqrs pattern event driven pattern event sourcing everything can be achieved in the serverless environment only the thing is you will be writing lambda or if you want to just create the server based environment then you might be using some microservice environment microservice being deployed on the ec2 instance or aws ecs or iws eks uh, maybe on the kubernetes cluster maybe on the uh, container services or maybe in the ec2 instances okay